Hey, welcome back to Cobb's Q. Today, we're doing porchetta, and we're gonna do this on the big green egg. Now, to be honest, I get a better, crispy, puffier skin when I do it in the oven. But, this is Cobb's Q, so we're gonna do everything outside today. And still, we're gonna get a crispy skin with a little bit of the help of the sous vide gun at the end, but this is phenomenal. The flavor is amazing, and it's a, just a lot of fun to do. So, let's get outside and let's get busy. Okay, to make the porchetta, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and build the um, amazing center, or what I mean by that is all of our herbs and spices. So, we're gonna go ahead and take a full sprig of parsley, to roll that up so it makes it easier to cut. And we're simply gonna come down, use our knuckles, Anyway, we're not crushing it, but we're still keeping it nice and tight. And then we take that and place that inside of a bowl. Take the rest of this and set it aside. After that, we're gonna go ahead and take four sprigs of rosemary. Now with the rosemary, we wanna go ahead and pull off the stems, or the leaves, if you will. So we're gonna pull these off easier from the top and just pull straight down. And then we're gonna go ahead and chop these up as finely as possible. Again, we'll set this aside. Okay, and once we've got these nice and fine, finely chopped, we'll go ahead and put our rosemary in. We're gonna go ahead and add eight cloves of garlic. Now you can shred it, you can do whatever you like to do. I just like to send it right through the garlic press, make it easier. And once we get all our garlic done, now we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, add one tablespoon of chili pepper flakes. Now we also want to put one tablespoon of Italian fennel pollen. Now you can use a or fennel um, that's crushed up. I prefer the fennel pollen. Let's get one tablespoon of this. We got 30 grams of salt. We also have the zest of three lemons. I'm not going to put that on until we're getting the porchetta ready and then we'll put those on. So this here, we're just simply going to mix this and set this aside. So making the porchetta, I like to roll this direction because this is where the loin would usually sit. However, this one I got from Costco today is a little bit short and it really doesn't come together. So that's easy. So we got a loin that's separated and we're going to roll it this way. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure that this area looks even. And then I just simply wanna take the loin, place it on the pork belly, and I'm gonna roll this. Now granted, this is skin side, and I just wanna find out where that's gonna meet. And that is roughly gonna meet right there, and the skin will come together. So all I'm gonna do is trace along that line, and I know where that is, and we're gonna cut that off. Trust me, sausage, fried pork bellies, there's a lot you can do with this. So we're simply gonna cut that off. We're gonna set this aside for now. And again, we should be able to come across and this should be able to come together where the skin comes together and it does. Now, I also noticed that part of this is hanging over right there. And because of that, we're gonna have a weird cut. So I'm simply gonna take my knife here, come right down, and I'm gonna even this out. This is great for sausage or anything else you wanna do. The only thing is at that point, you do wanna go ahead and remove the skin. I was shocked the other day when I found Costco was selling pork belly with skin on because I was making pork belly burn ends and I had everything ready and I went and I grabbed the pork belly, I went to cut it and I'm like, what is this? So. <laughs> They finally got it, which is really nice for porchetta. Uh, it's a little more time consuming for the pork belly. Now, when we get to doing the pork belly, we're gonna flip it over. I'm gonna dry this area dry right quick. I'm not worried about the cuts that I put into the paper. The paper is just protecting everything from the table for now. I'm also gonna dry off the skin of the belly. 
Eventually we're gonna want this belly to be very dry. I'm gonna put it in the fridge for two days to really dry this out before we use it. And I got a little trick that I've learned on uh, YouTube that I thought we're gonna give a shot this time and give it a whirl. So anyway, we're gonna set this over and a lot of people will tell you to take a sharp knife. Let me bend that down so we can see this better. Take a sharp knife and come through the skin. If you do too much of that and expose the meat, you can get dry areas and oftentimes the skin itself will also get very hard. So for that reason, I just prefer to use a meat press. And with a meat press, we're just gonna puncture the skin, but we're not gonna put these cuts in here that will take away from and dry out certain areas of the pork. So we're just gonna sit there and push this with a little manpower all the way up and down until we got holes all the way through. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow that skin to dry out. That's gonna allow the flavor to come through. It's also gonna allow a better crisp when we bring this up to temperature and it shouldn't be too hard that we can't bite into it. And if you look very closely, you can see all little cuts up and down through the whole thing. And if you missed anything, just go back and get it. And when you're done, this is gonna crisp up well. Okay, now that we've got the skin done, now I am gonna come back and I am gonna score the meat. And all that's gonna do is that's gonna allow some of the marinade that we've made of the herbs and spices to penetrate the meat a little better. I'm not gonna cut too deep, but deep enough just to get some of that goodness down inside of it. And I'm gonna go in two directions and just diamond cut it. Okay, and for now, I'm gonna set the pork belly aside. And the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and butterfly our pork loin. And we're gonna cut about maybe three quarters of the way through, get that down. And then I'm gonna turn the knife at a 90. I'm gonna cut again and just lay this out in both directions where I can get a good butterfly of this thing and just kind of lay it out. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fill some of this goodness that we've made right there into the center. And simply go like this, rub that in, and now we're gonna take this and roll it back together. We're gonna take that loin and we're gonna set it right in the middle of our pork belly. Before I roll the pork belly, the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and lay out some strings to make it easier to tie because we use butcher line or butcher uh, string to tie this together. And if I tie, just lay some out now, it's gonna make life so much easier after. I am gonna take the pork, skin side down, go ahead and lay it down across these. I might pull those last two together just a little bit. We'll see how much we need, but I just laid some string out here. Now I'm gonna take the parsley and herb mixture. I'm gonna rub all this together rub it down inside of those cracks and holes that we cut into this and just get it rubbed in really well to make sure that flavor is inside the porchetta because that'll really bring that flavor out while it's cooking. We're gonna go ahead and take the zest of three lemons. Now we don't want the white because the white will make this taste off, but we wanna just take the zest of three lemons and that'll bring out an amazing flavor. Okay, now that we have our lemon zest, it wasn't until I was ready to put the uh, pork loin on that I realized, oh, I put the pork belly on sideways. And normally it would be very long. Uh, so, so that was a shorter pork belly. We're gonna take our loin. We've already got set up. We're gonna take our belly. We're gonna start to roll this. And again, we wanna come until that reaches. And that is right there. Then I want to even up the edges as much as possible. And then I'm gonna start in the middle. Now this knot is gonna be a slip knot. Slip knot works really well. What I really like to do though, is just to tie a square knot because the square knot I can pop up and then move around and then it slides on top of itself. And then I'm gonna pull one leg of the square knot. So then what I can do is slide it down we're gonna get that in nice and tight. Once I have it tight, I'm simply gonna tie it off once and that'll lock it in place. And then I can cut any excess. And we're gonna do the same for each 
piece working outwards. Once again, just tie a quick square knot. Okay, now we got this tight. Pat it dry one more time. I am not gonna salt the outside. However, after a lot of research on YouTube, I came across something that was pretty interesting. And they basically stated that a splash of vodka would allow the skin to do a better crisp job and not become hard in the end. So with that, I have a cheap little bottle of vodka. And it doesn't take much from what they said. So I'm just gonna pour just a little bit in my hand and I'm gonna rub it completely over the belly. And it's just a dash. So I just, I'm not trying to get a whole lot of alcohol on here, but I kind of understand the process of what they're talking about because the alcohol too will help dry the belly. So one more little dash and that that's it. We're not gonna put any more than that. We're not gonna put any salt on here. We're gonna let this sit overnight. It's nice and tight. So in the process of getting the porchetta ready, we're now ready to put it in the fridge and we'll come back in two days and we'll start on the egg and we're gonna finish on the Traeger. Well, it's been exactly 38 hours and it's finally time to put the porchetta on. It's nice and dry. I am gonna put a little bit of salt on at this point. I didn't put it on yesterday's, I didn't want, or Friday. I'm gonna put a lot of the water on top of this and let it sit as it dried, but that's more for flavor later. We're rolling at 438 degrees, 440 degrees. I'm gonna keep it right there throughout the day for 45 minutes. And after 45 minutes, we're gonna pull it over to the Traeger for three and a half to four hours until the internal temperature reaches 170 degrees of the pork belly itself. That might be a little high for the loin, but the loin wrapped in with the pork belly will still stay moist. So let's go ahead and go for 45 minutes and then we'll pull it over to the Traeger. All right, so we went another 15 minutes just to get the skin kind of where I wanted it. So let's go ahead and take a look. Oh yeah, and what we're gonna do, I see it bubbling. We're gonna go ahead and put this on the Traeger now and then we'll hit it with a sous vide gun just to puff it up a little bit at the end, but this is gonna work out really well. So right now, let's go ahead and just move this over. This is looking really good. We got the Traeger rolling at 180. We're gonna take meter probe and I'm gonna put a meter probe number four in the pork belly itself. And I'm gonna put meter probe three in the loin, just so I can keep an eye on both of these. Now we're just gonna bring this over without getting the hot oil all over my hands. We'll shut that down and we're gonna go between three and a half to four hours. We wanna see 165 to 170 on that pork belly. That's when it really renders where it tastes best and uh, again i'm not worried about the pork loin overcooking being so ra tightly wrapped if you will uh, it's going to stay very moist so we're going to keep an eye on both of those as we go through and we'll be back in about three and a half to four hours when the probe reaches that 170. all right so we're hitting three hours and all the internal temperatures are where i want them but I know, again, the skin wasn't exactly what I was hoping to see. So what we're going to do is use our sous vide gun. And we're just going to go ahead and get that uh, popping and then we'll be good. It looks fantastic and smells amazing. So let's go ahead and get this going. So I'm going to go ahead and spin that around. To get too much black on there but it definitely will crisp up the skin we are going to go ahead and bring this over oh porchetta oh looks good
Okay, it is finally time to cut in and see how we did. I'm going to leave the strings on just to keep it tight and uh, we'll go from there. And, oh, man, that looks good. That looks juicy. Wow. Okay, now that we have this, let's uh, cut one for the obligatory cameraman. Well, it's, cr it's crispy. Let's just set this here and tell the cameraman to come in, grab a fork, and try that, and we're going to see how this tastes. You can see that's the loin. Mmm. Right. Mmm, the crisp of the skin. So, let's see. This looks like a good crispy piece of skin. Sure. Try that and tell me what you think. Oh, wow. The skin is really nice when it's crisp like this, and I would eat these as my normal chips. <laughs> eat them as your normal chips. There you go. So I want to try a little bit of this and the skin myself. Mm -hmm. So I know this is the loin, and I'm curious if the loin stayed uh, moist. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. Oh, wow. You need to give me more of these chips. <laughs> That flavor is amazing. And this is the belly. So I want to try the belly. Okay. Mmm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And then, here we go. I think that really nice mix of flavors you put in mm. between all of them mm -hmm. really came out in this. And it's not too salty. But it's definitely mm. got that profile of salt in there. That skin isn't yeah. too hard either. It the crunches right yeah. through it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay, there's some more uh, chips for you. My buddy Anthony told me about this. I'd never heard of one of these. I said, we're going to do it. And I know you couldn't be here, buddy, but uh, this was an A+. Plus. Thank you. Wow. No, I think, what do you think? I think we should close this one down and uh, <laughs> we got a lot to eat. It's a feast. That's right. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, so give Porchetta a try. You'll be very pleased with it. And take a moment and like. And subscribe. And thanks again for joining us today. Have a blessed day.